In this video, I'm going to go over the early measurement history. All right, so what do the following terms mean? I'm going to read through those. Some of those you might have heard, some you may not have heard of before. All right, so the cubit. The cubit was the measurement used by the Egyptians to build the pyramids. All right, so the cubit is the measure from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger when your arm is extended. The fathom. The fathom was used by seamen to measure the depth of water so that boats would not run aground and be stranded. The fathom is the measure from the fingertip to the fingertip when your arms are stretched sideways as far as they will go. You sometimes see a rope or fabric measured this way as well. All right, the hand span. The hand span was used to measure the height of horses. People still describe horses as being so many hands high. All right, so the hand span is the measure from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb when your hand is stretched out. All right, then we've got the pace. This term was used by the Roman army to judge speed. The term is still used frequently during various types of foot races. The pace is the measure of distance from one step to another. Right, the foot, a measurement equal to the length of an individual's foot. King Henry I standardized this measurement because his foot was 12 inches long. Right, you've got the girth. Girth was a measurement often used to measure fishing line. Right, the girth was the measurement around one's stomach or your belt measurement. The palm. The palm is the width of your four fingers when they are placed together. All right, so the history of measurements. All right, here's some examples of uh, measurements being used in history. All right, so measuring in this fashion can be quite challenging since you don't have a standard. All right, with trade and taxation came the need for standardized units. All right, so here's some examples of where they actually use these in ancient times. Standardized weights, all right, bronze ruler, and some more standardized uh, weights. All right, systems of measurement commonly used today. In early, or the early English inch was defined as the length of three barley coins laid end to end. All right, and here's a stamp commemorating the French Republic measuring one quarter of the Earth's circumference, which was the original idea behind the meter. All right, so how did the metric system come about? Well, during the 18th century, scientists measured the distance from the Earth's equator to its North Pole and divided it into 10 million parts. All right, this is how they came up with the length of the standard meter. All right, so the meter, it's the standard for the meter, is kept in a safe in France. The meter stick is a replica of that standard. So a meter is made up of 100 centimeters and 1,000 millimeters. All right, the liter. Scientists needed a way to measure liquids. So they took 10 centimeters and multiplied it by its length, width, and height to come up with a standard for measuring volume. Okay, so that means that the liter is the size of 10 centimeters cubed. Okay, and that liter is then used to measure liquids. All right, so the gram, scientists needed a standard to measure mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. They decided to take one cubic centimeter of water and call it a gram. Okay, so always give units with a measurement. All right, here's an example, the missing Mars climate orbiter. It was lost in space. In September 1999, the United States lost the Mars climate orbiter as it approached Mars. The loss of the 125 million spacecraft was due to scientists confusing English units and metric units. Two spacecraft teams, one at NASA Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, and the other at a Lockheed Martin facility in Colorado, 
where the spacecraft was built, were unknowingly exchanging some vital information in different units. All right, and then also another mix-up. On July 23, 1983, Air Canada Flight 143, a brand new Boeing 767, ran out of fuel while en route to Edmonton from Montreal at 26,000 feet. Miraculously, the caption was able to land Okay, that is a typo. Miraculously, the captain was able to land the plane on an abandoned Royal Canadian Air Force base at Gimli, where the runways were converted into two-lane drag strips for auto racing. No one was killed. All right, so this may mistake was caused by the ignorance of metric units. The new 767 used liters and kilograms to commute, compute fuel consumption, while the crew and refuelers were only familiar with pounds and gallons. They used 1.77 pound liter instead of 0 0.8 kilogram per liter. The fuel quantity information system was inoperative before the flight was started in Montreal. All right, so here's some historical notes. The Fahrenheit scale was invented by German-born scientist Gabriel Fahrenheit in 1714. It's really nice. You make up a unit of measurement, and then you get everybody uh, to start using it. And then you can name it after yourself. It's pretty cool. He originally defined the scale with zero degrees Fahrenheit, representing the coldest temperature he could create in the hope of avoiding negative numbers with a mixture of ice and salt. There is some controversy on these facts. Uh, some books will tell you a different way that he came about it. This particular one is the most accepted. Uh, some of them talk about the coldest temperature that he experienced um, in Germany and the hottest temperatures he experienced in Germany for that year. Uh, others are uh, this way that I'm explaining now. So Again, you'll hear some controversy on this, but this is right now the most accepted. All right, so he also wanted 100 degrees Fahrenheit to be about the human body temperature and wanted to have 180 equal parts between the freezing and boiling points of pure water. It turns out that the body temperature varies a lot between people and is not even constant for the same person. The average is, however, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So they talk about that if this is... Uh, right now the accepted way that they think that he came up with Fahrenheit then he must have been running a temperature uh, at that point it must have uh, his standard might have been a higher temperature all right but the American standard we use Fahrenheit which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit for freezing and 212 degrees Fahrenheit for boiling the metric system was based on water pure water that is uh, freezing being zero degrees Celsius and again this is uh, at sea level, uh, not up in the mountains, all right, but at zero degrees Celsius is freezing and 100 degrees Celsius is at uh, the boiling point. So basically, I get this next example here. Someone comes up with a measuring system. They do a lot of study on it. They uh, then try to get everybody to adopt it. All right, try to get the scientific community to start using their measuring system. Um, that is basically what you're going to be doing in the next assignment, is you're going to come up with your own measuring system, just like the Smoot here. Back in October 1958, Oliver R. Smoot was a first-year student at MIT, trying to join a fraternity, Lambda Chi Alpha, during Pledge Week. One of the frat boys were asked to do semi-insane things to demonstrate their willingness to be humiliated by upperclassmen, a test of character for certain fraternities. In Oliver's case, the assignment was to go with a bunch of other pledges to a bridge, the Harvard Bridge that spans the Charles River, and measure its length. They were told to use one of their members as a ruler. Smoot was chosen for the job because he was the shortest and had the silliest name. The measurement was done by getting Smoot to lie down, marking his height with chalk and paint, then getting him to stand up, 
move one length farther along and get down again and again and again. For a while, Smoot did it under his own steam, but after a hundred or so times, he became tired, and his companions ended up simply dragging him from one space to the next. In this way, it was determined that the bridge was 364.4 smoots long, plus an ear. And so the smoot was born. A smoot is the length of one 18-year-old Oliver R. Smoot which translates to 5 feet 7 inches exactly. Here's a picture of Smoot. Right? And then a little drawing that somebody had uh, written down. All right, so in 1987, the Massachusetts Department of Public Works decided that the bridge needed renovations and resurfacing, and this meant removing all the Smoot markings. This caused something of a common a commotion locally, and the press contacted Oliver Smoot, who was the executive vice president of the Computer and Business Equipment Manufacturers Association in Washington, D.C., to ask whether he would be prepared to be reused for new markings, should the need arise. He was less than sure that he would. Meantime, the Massachusetts Metropolitan District Commission, the folks in charge of the bridge, went on record in support of Smoot's. We recognize the Smoot's role in local history. That's not to mean that the agency encourages graffiti painting. But Smoot's aren't just any kind of graffiti. They're Smoot's. And so the Continental Construction Company of Cambridge paved the bridge with slabs that were 5 foot 7 inches long, Smoot length, instead of the usual 6 foot increments. Right, so the smoot became a legend just because uh, they made up this unit, which happened to be his height, which today he still lives. Right? And um, he is a standard. He made up this unit of his height and was able to measure something. And still today it is a standard. So it's just in you make up a unit you get other people to use it and it becomes a standard, right? So in the uh, activity, you're gonna be making your own unit, uh, just like Smoot himself did. And you're going to measure things around the classroom uh, with your new base unit. Uh, whatever you want to base it on, just make sure it is based on the length of something to make your unit of length uh, for you and your team.